Hello and welcome to early voting training with Ramsey County Elections. My name is Josh and I will be talking us through this presentation for early voting. To start, I'll be reviewing what early voting is in Ramsey County. Next, I'll be talking about the specific roles that election judges will play during the week. And last, I'll be talking about additional administrative duties like curbside voting, ballot return, and campaigning in or around the polling place. But before we get into any of that, remember to vote. If you live in Ramsey County, you'll be able to cast your ballot at the early voting location where you are working, so you can plan to do that. If you're a head judge on election day, we will deliver your election day materials. That would be your red tub and your poll pads to your specific early voting location before election day. Let's get into the overview of early voting. This year, we'll be opening the following early voting locations listed here on this slide. All of these locations will be featured on an interactive map that will show where voters can cast their ballot and drop off ballots that were mailed to them. Each early voting location will have consistent hours. Those hours apply to all of our early voting locations except for the Plato office building, which will have extended hours during that time period. The first day of early voting, we'd like you to report to your location at 9 a.m. And that gives you a full hour before voting starts at 10. Then for any of the subsequent days, you can report 30 minutes before the start of voting. Any voter who lives within Ramsey County can vote at any of our early voting locations. That means all locations will have all of the ballots for Ramsey County. You'll be administering this process with a laptop computer and using a centralized database called the Statewide Voter Registration System. Early voting locations operate a little differently from polling places on election day. So this activity falls under some of Minnesota's absentee voting laws. So let's talk about some of the differences between early voting and election day. During the early voting period, all voters are required to complete the absentee ballot application before they're issued a ballot. That's a Minnesota state law. So if any voter in Minnesota wants to vote before election day, they're required to complete that absentee ballot application. On election day, however, if you're a pre-registered voter, you don't have to complete any paperwork and you certainly don't have to complete an application. During the early voting period, we offer multiple locations that serve all of the voters within Ramsey County. However, on election day, you are assigned to a specific polling place to which you can go and vote. During the early voting period, we use a laptop computer and a centralized database. On election day, we still use some technology, it's called the poll pad, but the poll pad is assigned to a specific precinct and only serves those voters. So there are a couple processes that apply to both events, and we'll start with the election day registration process. If you're familiar with working at a polling place on election day, you know that somebody can walk in, register to vote, and then cast their ballot all within the same process. You can also do that during the early voting period. The other similarity I wanna bring your attention to is during both events, the voter is depositing their ballot directly into a ballot counter. That's different from somebody absentee voting during the previous five weeks of the period who would be casting their ballot using envelopes. But it's during that last week where voters can deposit their ballot directly into the ballot counter. And of course, we can do that on election day as well. 
This picture illustrates the flow that you'll see in an early voting location. Voters enter and are greeted by an election judge and then instructed to fill out that absentee ballot application. Once that's done, they proceed to the SVRS judge. That's the person who's working on the computer. And SVRS, remember, is that acronym, Statewide Voter Registration System. So the SVRS judge takes the voter's application, they enter that information into that database, and it's there that we determine if the voter is registered or if we need to have them go through the election day registration process. We also determine at that point which ballot the voter should receive. So a different election judge grabs that ballot, the ballot is then issued to the voter, and then they proceed to a voting booth to complete their ballot, and then it's deposited into a ballot counter. So that's the general overview of early voting in Ramsey County. Now we're gonna talk about the specific election judge roles that you'll see in each of these locations. The first is the greeter judge, who is there to welcome, greet the voter, say hello, and then confirm to the voter that yes, they're in the right spot to vote today. They'll instruct the voter to complete the absentee ballot application. They'll also have access to sample ballots. And then the greeter judge is also responsible for managing any lines that form as voters complete their application. This is an image of the absentee ballot application. Every voter will need to complete the front side of this form before proceeding. The boxes in gray indicate the required information. Uh, to start from the top, you don't have to worry about what's in box one, that's election dates. Uh, the voter is there to vote with you that day, regardless of what box that they've checked. They do need to provide their name, their current residential address, their date of birth, their ID number, and then a signature. The next role is the SVRS judge who is working on a computer. Again, SVR stands for Statewide Voter Registration System. It's the name of that database that we're using for this activity. The first step is to search for the voter's record in the database using the information that they provided on that absentee ballot application. You're verifying this information, specifically their name, address, date of birth, and ID numbers. You'll be issuing a ballot, and then you're essentially marking in the central database that this person has voted, which prevents them from going to a different early voting location and voting again. Now, on the back of that absentee ballot application is the voter's certificate. The voter should not complete this with the greeter judge as they'll need to complete it when they're issued a ballot by that SVRS judge. Signing this voter certificate is equivalent to signing the roster on election day. If the voter needs to register as part of this early voting process, they can do that with the SVRS judge. So that judge will need to view acceptable election day registration documents, just like is done on election day. The voter completes the voter registration application, which you see here on the screen, and then our election judge fills out the bottom portion, the election judge official use only section. Uh, then the rest of the transactions, very similar to that of a pre-registered voter, uh, will have them fill out the voter certificate and then issue them a ballot. We have another position called the ballot judge. They will help retrieve the correct ballot based on where the voter is living at the time. Remember that each location has access to all of the ballots. So pictured here is the bin in which they're stored. The ballot judge will need to go into the bin knowing the voter's precinct and then retrieve the correct ballot. As you can imagine, this is an opportunity to make errors. So we want you to audibly verify that the ballot is for the correct precinct. And you're doing that with the SVRS judge. 
So essentially you're saying, yes, this voter is from Roseville Precinct 4. Yes, the ballot that I have in hand is Roseville Precinct 4. And we want you to do that for every single transaction. Just like on election day, we need to initial the upper right hand corner of these ballots. Uh, and we want that to be one, one pair of initial is the ballot judge, the other pair is the SVRS judge who's helping the voter. Um, but we're also gonna ask you not to pre-initial any of the ballots, do it as part of the transaction with the voter. If the voter makes a mistake on their ballot, you can do that one for one exchange of the ballot and and we want the ballot judge to manage that process they'll be able to spoil and reissue a new ballot now for our svrs judges we're using the word spoil in two different ways if the voter makes a mistake on their physical ballot in your early voting location we can do that one for one exchange uh, where they get a new ballot and we take their old one, that's called spoiling, right? We have a different process that we'll talk about in a totally separate training in which the voter is mailed a ballot and they come to you wanting to vote in person. We have to spoil that ballot, but we're doing it in the system, in the database. So that's an entirely different process, but we do use that word spoil to mean two different things. We've been conducting early voting for a few years here at Ramsey County, and, and we've come to find that voters tend to go to the location that is closest to them. So for example, if you live in Roseville, you're probably gonna go to the Roseville Library. We've decided we're going to provide pre-printed blank ballots to locations based on their geography within Ramsey County. However, we're not providing pre-printed ballots for some of the precincts that are quite a bit further away from your early voting location. So if you don't have a pre-printed ballot, you will be using a ballot on demand printer. So this is the device that will print a blank ballot for any precinct within Ramsey County. Uh, we're gonna be providing each head judge with specific instructions on how to use this it's a pretty simple to use machine and we're providing uh, every location with written documentation in the form of a duty card. Uh, but your head judge will also know how to use this device and, and uh, we'll expect the head judge to go ahead and teach our other election judges uh, before early voting starts. Another position is the equipment judge. Just like on election day, they'll be stationed at the ballot counter and they'll be there to assist voters who have any questions or need extra assistance with casting their ballot into the machine. Very important, the equipment judge should not allow any of our voters leave with their ballot. And just as important, they should not allow any voters to come in with the ballot that they may have received in the mail and try to cast it into the ballot counter. That's, that's not allowed. And then of course, just like on election day, they're there to distribute the I voted stickers. Next, we have the head election judge who of course is in charge of the location. They're there to manage, they're the main contact with our office, they're responsible for completing the official forms, and then they are also responsible for bringing down the daily returns, the ballots and the other election materials each day. Our office provides a variety of support for our, our early voting locations. So we'll have area judges who will visit the location and provide support on site. We'll also have a hotline that head judges can call with their SVRS specific questions. Now we'll discuss other tasks that are performed in the early voting location. Now let's talk in more detail about the ballot return process. As a quick overview, mailed ballots can be returned at any of the early voting locations by the voter or another person, which is legally called the voter's agent. Your job as an election judge is to review the envelope, it's called the signature envelope, for proper completion. The head judge can assign somebody 
to monitor this activity if we have enough voters who want to take advantage of the service. Along with their blank ballot, voters in Minnesota receive one of two signature envelopes that will be sent to them through the mail when they request this absentee ballot. The signature envelope is going to have a label at the top that lists the voter's name, address, and precinct. But you as an election judge will need to verify that the rest of the signature envelope is completed properly. You're looking for the voter's ID number, their signature, and witness information. We're not verifying their specific number, just that they are completing those boxes on the signature envelope. The witness is required to be, an el to be eligible to vote in Minnesota, must view the voter's blank ballot, and then provide their name, address, and signature. When you are receiving that drop off absentee ballot, you'll want to verify that all of the information is completed properly on the signature envelope. The other type of signature envelope is for non-registered voters. The label at the top will include the voter's name, address, and precinct. The voter needs to provide their ID number and signature, and the witness needs to provide their name, address, and their signature. For a non-registered voter, the witness also needs to indicate what election day registration documents they saw as proof that the voter is currently registered at the name and address for which we sent them a ballot. The witness will need to check a box to indicate the type of election day registration documents that they saw. So as an election judge, you need to make sure that all of the information is completed, including that one of those boxes is checked. If one of the boxes is not checked and you take the envelope, the voter's ballot may be rejected by the absentee ballot board. A little more detail about this process. If the voter is returning their own ballot, they do not need to complete any paperwork. If the signature envelope, registered or non-registered, is missing the voter's information, then their voter can fill it out right there before submitting it to you. However, if the envelope is missing some or all of the witness information, we can't accept the envelope because it's incomplete. However, the voter can vote with you that day at the early voting location. They'll need to fill out another absentee ballot application, but they can be treated like anybody else and go through the early voting process. If the ballot is returned by a person other than the voter, that's called the voter's agent, and they will need to fill out additional paperwork called the absentee ballot agent delivery log. And they'll need to show you, the election judge, their ID. An agent can return ballots for up to three other people, and that rule applies for the entire election. So the agent cannot do three one day and three the next day, etc. just three for the entire election period. If an agent requests, requests to obtain a ballot for someone else, you can instruct them to contact our office. This is a service that we provide and it's specific to the week before election day. And they'll need to visit the Plato office building to carry out this process, but they should call our office first for details. Here's a picture of that agent delivery log. The agent will need to complete this for each voter for whom they're dropping off a ballot. So if they bring in three ballots, they need to fill this log three separate times. They're writing in the date, their name, their address, and then the voter's name and address, and then providing their signature. If the agent brought the voter's ballot and the signature envelope is missing some information, it can't be accepted by the elections office, so you'll want to encourage the agent to return the envelope to the voter so that it can be completed properly. 
If the agent insists on leaving it with you, even though we know it's incomplete, you can take it and the elections office will contact the voter to let them know of their voting options. We'll be offering curbside voting during the early voting period. So a voter can vote curbside, which means they stay in their car for the duration of the voting period. We provide specific signage to each early voting location. We issue cell phones to all of our head judges to make communication between our office and your location a little bit easier. The sign outside of your early voting location uh, for these curbside voters will actually have that cell phone's number listed. So if a voter calls that, they'll be speaking directly with the head judge and then they'll let them know that they're outside waiting for service. Also, voters can return their mailed ballot outside from their car. Let's talk a little bit more about the curbside voting process. If a voter calls, the head judge will alert another judge to bring out the absentee ballot application. Once it's completed, the judge will bring it to an SVRS judge or, or a computer judge who will then process that application to obtain the correct ballot. At this point, two judges of different major political parties will bring out the ballot, a secrecy sleeve, a pen, and an I voted sticker out to the voter. Once the material is brought to the voter, the voter completes the voter's certificate on the back side of the absentee ballot application. Next, if the voter is non-registered, you'll need to view proper election day registration documentation and have them complete the voter registration application. Then the voter can fill out their ballot. Once they're done, you'll wanna ask that the voter remains in their car until a judge can return to tell them that their ballot was cast successfully into the ballot counter. Election judges can assist an unlimited number of voters during the early voting period. When assisting activities other than marking a ballot, such as completing an application or providing language assistance, Law allows for only one judge to assist with those activities. We ask that you only help as much as you are requested by the voter. If you are assisting a voter with marking a ballot, you will need two judges of different major political parties. You'll need to mark the ballot according to the voter's direction. Enter the voting area and remain with the voter throughout the entire voting process. Be sure to direct questions and information to the voter and not to somebody else that may be with the voter. Uh, you also may use a voter's completed sample ballot as direction to marking the ballot for the voter. A voter may choose anyone to assist with marking a ballot, except for an employer, an agent of the employer, or officer or agent of the voters union. Assistance may also help with any other part of the process, including completing an application or any other language assistance. That person must stay with the voter through the entire voting process and then leave with the voter when they exit the location. An individual cannot linger within the early voting location. They must be there to vote or to assist another voter. No campaigning is allowed inside the location or on the property of the building. Voters may wear political clothing as long as it does not contain the candidate name or words or phrases from questions on the ballot. We have reached the end of the early voting training. Thank you very much for participating. I know it was a lot of information, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our office at any point. Otherwise, you can go ahead and ask your head election judge. And with that, thank you.